Trouble with the Express. Based on the original story by Tardis 9, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. Just beyond Gordon's Hill, on the inside line, the curve is significantly tighter than all the others. This makes it very dangerous for all trains to go fast, whether an engine is pulling trucks, coaches, or either one. Most of the engines on the Fat Director's Railway are very careful when going over this particular section of track. They knew it was for their own good. 87546, however, had other ideas. A day passed since Thomas and Edward had filled in for his passenger train. You're all just scared, he scoffed one day. You should try a little record breaking. Be a bit more daring like me, hmm? You, with all your speeding, 87546, should know at least better than tearing around tight corners, Edward argued. Pah! That curve is safe enough for engines to go at a hundred miles per hour. I'm being incredibly foolish, snapped Edward. Agreed, said Gordon. Express engines may be fastest and best, 87546, but our railway, safety, and being our time are our top priorities. Indeed, replied Henry. Hear, hear, said Thomas. 87546 just snorted in disgust as he set off to collect his coaches. The coaches were waiting for him in the yard at Vickerstown. They had heard all about his and 9462's behavior with them and were not too keen on having them, him taking them out. And they were right not to, for when 87546 arrived in the yard, he backed towards them so sharply that he ended up bumping them hard. Oh, 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 they groaned. Watch it, you big brute. But 87546 just took no notice whatsoever. As soon as he was coupled up, he pulled out so sharply that, clang, a coupling broke, just in front of the first coach. You silly engine, snapped his shunter. You ripped the coupling clean off. Now I'll have to find a replacement. But 87546 didn't care. He decided best to collect Gordon's coaches for the Express, the Wild Norwester, instead. But everyone was still very cross for, at him. Things went worse for 87546 as the journey went on. At the next station at Marin, a signal was broken, so they had to stop to let off passengers anyway. 87546 seethed impatiently at this. We should have ju we should have just gone through. We're late enough already, he moaned to his crew. No one can say we disagree with you, said his driver, who personally wanted to finish the journey, only to get home and away from his disrespectful engine. But it's orders. Pah! You're just a, you're just a goody two-shoes. Too nervous to take a few tiny risks, said 87546 rudely. We would have made it safely through the whole line if you weren't such a coward. I'd rather be a coward than a reckless piece of scrap, the driver muttered to the fireman, who solemnly agreed with him. Half an hour later, amidst the complaints to the passengers, not held up by 87546's insults, the workmen had finished the signal. By then, some of the passengers had decided they had enough, so they left the express anyway. 87546 grew crosser and crosser at this. When the guard blew his whistle again, he bumped and banged the coaches as they set off. Oh, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, they screamed. We don't like that. We don't like that. We don't like that. Shut up and get moving, snapped 87546. We're late enough as it is. Every wise engine's nose never to bump coaches or else they would get back at them. Soon, they were climbing Gordon's Hill. When 87546 started to pick up speed, since his train was now half empty, he didn't need a banker as much. As soon as they neared the top, 
the coaches begin the tricks. This is it, thundered the first coach. Let's get him, girls! And banging their buffers, they pushed 87546 down the hill. To make matters worse, they were now on the down line, the same line as the sharp curve on the other side. When 87546 saw the curve ahead of him, he realized his mistake and tried to stop. But by then, it was far too late. Ow, ow, ow! He groaned. Luckily, the driver and fireman jumped clear before the crash. But 87546 laid on his side, looking battered, bruised, and badly damaged. Soon, Ed Edward soon arrived with the breakdown train and moved alongside the wreckage. It was worse than he had thought. He saw a few passengers outside the train looking badly injured. One of whom was being carried on a stretcher. Get the engine's passengers to the last station as fast as you can, ordered the guard. I'll go and telephone for help. Right away, sir, responded Edward, and quickly raced away with his coach in tow and the passengers aboard. Thankfully, the fat director wasn't amongst the passengers, but was far from happy for what 87546 had done. This is why I never liked these big engines, he snapped. I would have thought you would have known better than to do something such as stupid as this, 87546. An engine of your size should know better than to go at that than to go that ridiculously fast. Even Gordon knows that. Beca but because of you, 16 passengers were injured. One of them, the Vicar of Wellsworth, seriously. It wasn't my, it wasn't my fault, sir. These coaches made me go faster, replied 87546 sulkily. Of course we did, snapped the first coach. You bumped us, remember? And your own coaches too, agreed another. You wanted to go fast, and just because we were delayed by a broken signal, agreed the third. And we know how you and 9462 are like, finished the fourth. So not only you have put in your passengers in danger, you've also been bumping and banging your coaches about again, yelled the fat director furiously. That's it. I've had it with you, you 87546. As soon as you are mended, you will stay in the shed until we have decided what to do with you. As soon as 87546 was repaired, he returned to the sheds at Vickerstown and stayed there for a very, very long time. He resented the fat director furiously for this. Although he and 9462 would pay the price for their fool for their foolishness for this.